hello and welcome to another Woodworking Wisdom. So today we're going to look at what happens if you get some new tools. Now the relevance of this, this is just after Christmas. So if you're watching this in the middle of July, I'm sorry, okay, but you understand the aspect of. So maybe as a Christmas present you had something that's new. I want to show you how maybe you need to sharpen it, touch it up, get it to work a little bit better. All those things come into it. Now the weird thing there is that you need to sharpen it. Doesn't it come ready sharp? Not everything. I mean, I've got a whole range of different things here now. Something as simple as a bulge gouge. Out the packet, very square grind, not what I'd normally use. So I need to be able to adjust it and get it to work for what I want it to do. Now, relevance to that, and I do get people say, but surely if you buy something new, it should work straight out of the pack. I can understand the relevance of that. But also I could throw that back in and go, but unless you can understand how you sharpen it, you can't maintain it long term. So how are you going to keep it sharp? If we show you a hand plane, it's razor sharp to start with. Can you keep it going, keep that cut? So it is one of those things you've got to be able to learn how to sharpen your tools. So we're going to look at a little bit of how we can sharpen stuff. What else might need doing to it? Okay, so we're going to got a bunch of different things here. Okay, so going to start with something a bit weird. We we'll just had Christmas. The simple kitchen knife. Okay, you'll see the relevance of why I've thrown this in in a second actually. So, our kitchen knife, we need to sharpen it. Um, I definitely cannot use a knife steel. All right, I have tried using knife steels over the years, but I can use a Japanese water stone. So, the whole idea of what we've got here is something that I can sharpen my knife with. So, we have a water stone which is double sided, 1400, let's go 400 coarser. I've got a knife holder, which has a ceramic edge, and I can sharpen my knife. That's all I've got to do. So my Japanese water stone, really useful just to sharpen that, keep that nice and sharp. We can do both sides. That knife holder helps give me that repeatability, if you like, and that's a magic word. So I can come both sides, touch it over. I'm gonna give the stone a little bit more water, and it is water stone, so just flush those particles out again. So we've done one side, now we're going to go find a grade. The higher the number, the better the finish. So 4,000, we do exactly the same. Now do the tip. So that'll be quite quick, he's got quite a few things you want to go through. So that's a real simple little thing to sharpen and make repeatable. Touch it up, get a nice sharp edge. Other thing I can do to this, we'll bring it into here. Leather strop, just move the water bottle so we get, all right, I can pull it towards me. Now the leather strop will take off that micro bear that we might have produced. That little wire edge, pulling it towards me so away from that cutting edge. That'll just polish that up, but take that edge off. Nice sharp kitchen knife, simple and easy to do. Now the reason, I brought this into play for you. Got a few other things you're going to need to sharpen. Your hand plane, your chisels, your spoke shapes. All those things we can actually do on here. So you could have one water stone set up. Sharpen your knives on. We'll also double up for your hand planes, your chisels. So let's just push that over a little bit. So you have a new chisel. I've got this biggest chisel we could find. Um, this one I've had down in here. It's got the clip on the front. Okay. So you can see it there. Actually, if I take this off, and I don't know how if you can see this, but these are actually coated in a lacquer. The front here, I've got a blob there, comes around the corner. So these actually have a coating. Why do they have that coating? Physically, if I start touching this and it's left on the shop shelf with no lacquer on, it'll start to corrode, go rusty. We'll get fingertip marks because your fingers are a little bit damp. So it will affect it. So actually most manufacturers will put on a protective coating, if you like, to stop it corroding in transit, storage, and when it's on the shop shelf. So it looks pristine when we get it. The problem with this, it affects how we're going to sharpen it. So I need to do a couple of little things for this one. Something as a solvent. So I've got some cellulose thinners, a little bit of cloth. You might need to soak it, depends on what they've used as a thing. But something like the thinners, if we wipe it over, will soften that lacquer. 
we want to remove it. Downside with this, yes, it will make things corrode if you leave it in the drawer and they get damp. But we need to get rid of that lacquer. So I'll wipe over with something like some solvent. We'll soften the lacquer on there, take it off, allow you to actually sharpen that effectively. Okay, so good one to show you. I can see things are softening on here. I'll cut through it a little bit. But that lacquer is something you need to get rid of. All right, so that one's done. And like I said, if you if you start looking at your seat, it's like a yellow coating. Can be worth looking at. If not, it will affect how this sharpens. It will also clog your water stone a lot more. So it will actually start to clog up the pores, make it difficult to clean. So big white chisel, I'm just going to put it out of the way. It's a good one to show you as a thing. So your chisels, you might want to sharpen your hand plane. Let's do the plane first. So you have a brand new hand plane. We've got our cap iron takeoff. We want our chip breaker out of here. We need something to separate the two. So a little screwdriver. There's my blade. So on our blade on here, we've got a nice clean bevel. Actually, it's sharp, it would probably cut, but nowhere near like I'd want, okay? This is sharpened to a 25 degree angle. Most hand planes when you get them will be sharpened to a 25 degree bevel, and that is it. We can do a whole range of different angles on this. So maybe that's one of the reasons when people say, why doesn't it come sharp? What are you going to do with it? 25 degrees is fantastic for softwoods. The minute we go to hardwood, you probably want to go up to 30. Get something very dense, I could go up to 35, 40, depending on what I want as an angle. Okay, so we can change that bevel angle. So there's no point in the manufacturer sharpening this if you're going to change it. Also, the other aspect of that takes them time. So they're trying to produce stuff and make it appealing, trying to cut costs down if you like. So the less time they sharpen something, the better. So I want to put my cutting edge on this. Now, when I went to college, Waterstone, and we could use a whole range of different sharpening mediums. We've got Waterstone. I just kick a few things around. And again, if you've watched over the year, you know, scary sharpening board, diamond stone, whole range of things. They will all work. Don't go get me wrong. There's, you know, there's different things there. My scary sharpening board I use a lot. The diamond stone I've used a lot. Water stones is what I've traditionally used. So I'm going to leave the diamond kit here, all right, or the diamond stone. Water stone would be a better term, wouldn't it? That we use for the knife sharpening. So we could sharpen your knives. Now, traditionally, when I went to college, I'd be there. And I'd have to do this freehand. But actually, my wrist flex, it's really difficult to try and keep that nice and accurate and not change your angle. Takes a bit of effort. Why not make it easier? Okay, so something as a honing guide. There's different things there. Why do I want to go with a honing guide? I want to make it repeatable, accurate, get better results, quicker, faster, easier to do. All right, so freehand sharpen is quite an art. So on here we have Veritas honing guide. This is a Mark II. We have different settings on this, red, yellow, and green. I'm on the yellow setting, which is midway. So I'll go with the yellow line down on here. I want a 30 degree bevel. I can slide this on, has like a dovetail on the edge here. I can lock it up, so I can tighten it. Okay, so that will slide in. I also have a scale on here, so it says two inches. My plane blade we have is about two inches wide. If I turn it over, we can get the blade down through. Just gonna undo the collar stop, which I'll explain again in a sec. I can come up to the lump stop, which is that bit. I've got something parallel down the side to keep it nice and straight. If I hold it, I can turn it over, gonna lock these off nice and equally. So I tighten them up. That's good. Now at the moment we said our plane blade has a 25 degree bevel. The only bit I want to sharpen now is a little bit right on the front. So to make life easier, we can color this in a bit. All right, so marker pen. We're going to do some stuff on the back. This is probably being done when they sharpen this factory wires on a linisher, so I get a bit of a bear on the back if I feel it. A bit of a wire edge. I can actually catch my nail on there. We're going to lose that in a second. Waterstone again, as we said. We've got, which grade have we got here? 
400. I could go to the 1,000. I could do the 400, but it's a bit coarse. We go 1,000 grit will give me better finish. My thumbs, I can put them behind. We can go up and down. Now, this has got a lovely big wide roller. I'm making this look easy, but it actually is resting on this wide roller here. So a lot of support, makes it easy to maintain. Fingertip pressure, my weight, as I pull back, relax. So I'm almost putting pressure every time I pull back. But the roller takes the guesswork out of that action. We've now got, if I can bring it up, I hope to the overhead camera. Let's just bring me in a bit. Now if you can see there's a front line now, we're taking off where that pen is, look, you can see it beautifully here. Right, we've got that little line in front, so I've changed the angle on the back here. There's a big bear now, I've curled that edge over, so we're going to go flat, up and down. Okay, so we've got no bear on the back, nice and flush. This has got a few lines on the back on here. Now it depends on how fanatical we want to get. They've got a brush finish, but actually nothing coarse. I can run my nail across, I can't feel anything. I could do a little bit more work on the back, but as such, with what I've done there, we can do exactly the same as we did with the knife. Love a stroke. Up to my angle, just gently bring it up, pull it along. Pulling away from that edge, nice and flat on the back. We can do the same again. That'll give me something that sharper. I don't know if you can see, a little bit more shine on the front of this now as well. So, quite easy to do and make it repeatable. The major thing that I want to try and get through, most of you, it's physical to do freehand sharpening, keep it accurate. So, we can actually make it repeatable, quick and simple. Wow. So. Plane blade, that's actually pretty sharp now, okay? When we bring it back into our plane, let's just skid this over. Chip breaker, goes on through 90 degrees. So you've got the screw, if I can just bring it back off. Drops in over, bring it back, turn it around. Gently, feed it back. Now I'm a little bit tight, so I'm gonna undo the screw, quarter turn, sliding it forward and I want to be about a millimetre back from that front edge. You can see the little step I've got up on here. Finger tighten it. So I'm doing left hand, just do the screw. Now I can turn it over, back to my screwdriver, tighten it up. So, near to that front, tighten it. Next thing, and people do get this wrong, I'm gonna put my plane there to have jacked it up. The blade needs to go upside down. The chip breaker is on the top. This, if you look at it, comes to a wedge shape on both sides. All right, so you're not putting the chip breaker on the front of the blade. You've actually got point of the blade coming up, longer. Chip breaker, longer, all right? Tiny little gap in between, that's about spring pressure. So now if we come to put this in, gonna lower it gently. I've got a couple of things on here. Lateral movement, this lever. Got a little bit there, that's to do with the oak. Line up central, carefully put it in. The screw that's there goes into that location. Got it in, wiggle this about a little bit, that lateral movement, check things seat nicely. We can bring cap iron on the top, turn it up. Now, struggling to get the cap iron on, so I'm gonna undo that brass screw. This is new plane that we had in here at the box, so I'm just, Really just adjusting things from where it's been packed, done up tightly so it will not move when it's posted out, if you like, being delivered. Now I can tighten this scrap. This is putting pressure right down on the front edge, so it's clamping it in. If I want to bring the blade forward, now let's have a look where have we got our blade at the moment. Let's do tester block. I've got a cut here, got a cut there, we're a long way out at the moment. Winding the blade back, so I'm bringing it back on this lateral on the movement here. That's the yoke adjuster, still too much cut. I could sight down the blade, but that's difficult to show you on a camera. So little block of wood can be good, just to see what's happening, no cut. Now let's bring it up again. So I'm winding the lever clockwise, 
And again, quite heavy movements at the moment. Left hand side's just touching, so I'm going to adjust the lateral movement, which is the long lever on here, over a little bit. Still touching on the edge. Play around with that lever that will adjust where the blade's sitting. Can do it a bit more. Going to bring it up a little bit. So the little block of wood's a really good way of testing where your cut is. Before you go and hit your piece of wood and make a heavy cut, I'm trying to get something equal all the way across the plane. So I've got a cut here, cut on the other side, something in the middle. That's good. So I've set my plane up for my cut. I could bring it back a little bit. So a little bit of backlash on there. There's got to be something to allow it to move just under the surface now. So again, I can set that nice light cut. But this little block of wood just takes the guesswork out. That's really good. I don't know if you can... I hope you just hear that. It's quite a light shaving I'm getting now. I'm not trying to take loads. I can always increase it to do more, but that's set up so I could set it in the box if I'm not going to throw it about. I'm not going to get dropped or anything. Put it on the shelf. It's ready to go. Ready to be used. So that simple finger. Simple sharpen. Set it up. Get it to work. Other things you could do if you want to help it glide. Some hand tool wax just underneath here. Buff it up. I've got a few marks on here where I've got a little bit of wax. A bit of candle wax. Something like that would be really good. Okay. So we've done our plane. Chisels. Need to sharpen a chisel. Again. Learnt to freehand sharpen. Go to there. I'd probably be this way. On its side and try and come down. But again, tricky to maintain this angle. So we could go back to the same honing guide we use. Veritas one. We can go inch. The chisel we've got is three quarter. We, we could load it exactly the same as we did earlier. Okay, uh, around there, look, that's better. So we can get that loaded, bring it down straight. We could even go down to a 3mm chisel. Now I'm going to highlight, if you like, a drawback with this. Let's see if we can get the chisel through. Bring it down a little bit. Chisel's a bit thicker than our plane blade, so I'm having to unlock the clamping bar. Now I've got a 3mm chisel in here now. The problem is, unless I clamp it up nice and equally, I get a bit of movement. So if you're sharpening, it's not always holding it. So if I can undo. Honey guide, that bit. There's also an add-on cut you can do for this. So small chisel head. All right, so we've taken off the plain one, which has got a clamp bar, which moves in there. Your plain blade or chisel goes through here. If you go too small a chisel, you want something that's going to grip better. This has got two little vice jaws. You can see them winding it, they're opening out. I can wind them back in. It's also got the location points on here. So it sits on top of that same roller. We need the brass screw. We've got yellow and green. We haven't got red, yellow and green on this. So slightly different. Yellow is what I was working on on a scale when we started over here look so want our bar we can put that onto there exactly the same technique and we can do that three mil chisel we can bring it in i'm just bringing these up lock it off going to slide that over and just temporarily lock it in place with the grub screw here up to that lock that stop point so all i've done there and everything's silver on here you can see the chisel will come up to there Slide that off. Now, do you think this is clamping either side like a vice? We've now set our bevel angle with the protrusion. We can do this nice and easily. Now, I'll make it look simple. Well, one hand, but I want to do both just support it back and forwards. Again, that roller is doing the hard work of supporting it, keeping it accurate. I can move across the water stone. Dead easy to sharpen. Got the same thing we need to do with the hand plane. We do the back. Keep it flat, don't lift anything up. We can do leather strop. We pull it, flip it over, work down it. 
So your chisels you could do, if they're a lot wider, you'll do with a standard head. Little vice jaws on there, which is actually classed there. Let's have a quick look on the book. Narrow blade head, okay? Really good for that little chisel, all right? So, hem planes and chisels suddenly become a lot easier. The aspect of making things repeatable is so important if you want to speed this up, get it accurate. You'll spend less time trying to grind your chisels away to get it back to a nice clean angle, okay? Spoke shape. And again, I've had a couple of guys who work in here lately come and go, how do you sharpen a spoke shape blade? Now, the problem with a spoke shape blade, if we go with where we are on either of these, this one, we open right out. And screw it. Won't fit in there. It's too wide. A little bit annoying. If we put it into the plain one, we can go red one for a minute and clamp on. Scale would bring us further back on the red. So if we go green, that there, that there. Yellow is probably our better line. So I'm looking at colours on here so I can wiggle this about, trying to figure out why I might be able to get this. I'm playing around with it. I know the result for this. Even with this, it will fit in. Just tightening things up either side. I can slide that up. Just about get this. Let's have a look. Pin it on. All right. Tighten this one. Turn it back over. I want that protrusion up to there. We need to check where we are. Both sides. We're at 30 on a yellow. That's good. Now on this smoke shape bag, this is quite rectangular on the back. I've got enough we can get onto there and it will support it. It will grip it. But these are actually quite a long blade. A bit more material this way. I way I've done these in the past, magnetic holder. So again, this is a Veritas item. What I would class as an eclipse style honing guide. All right, there's lots of these out there. I set it up so the magnet holder will give me enough protrusion just to set that up. And again, we can set up an angle. I do a scribe line on the Veritas item or piece of tape if we want across the top. And you've got a way then of making it repeatable and quick to put in there, but to hold it. Can't put too much pressure on here because the magnets will kick off a little bit. All right, but they've got quite a strong hold. But a good way of actually being able to quickly cut that up, take the guesswork out of it, make it easy and repeatable. We can do the back. Lever strut, polish it up. Real easy to do. Okay, let's put that one back out of the way. Again, we can set it up very similar to what we did the plane blade. We've got fine adjusters. We can come to here, little piece of wood. Need to come forward a little bit. We can set up our depth of cut. So before you suddenly hit the work and take too much cut because you're getting impatient, you can easily just wind this forward and see what you can do with your little block. Nothing worse than taking a real heavy cut. So I'm cutting there, not cutting equally the other side so I can come forward a bit. Adjust the right hand side, we'll bring the one on the left back just a touch, then wind it up so it takes up that backlash. So you can easily play around with setting those. And again, once they're set, don't need to play too much. Most people get impatient, they take a too heavy a cut on that first few swipes and then complain they get lots of juddering. Trying to take too much. So nice and light, but again, easy to sharpen if you make it easy. Something to hold that little blade with. Okay, where are we? We've done there, that, that, that. Okay. Let's lose the water stone. Fine bits. Weird and wonderful thing I get asked for, and I must see someone every week who will come in and say, Jace, got your, your tools for your returning stuff. How, how do you sharpen them? Now, if you go back onto the main website for where we got them listed, there is a little video attached to it that goes over the use of and, okay, how you sharpen, but do get asked regularly. These have, I think if we can go up to there, hollow grind on the top, round here. Right, so that's done with a grinding wheel. It fans out from the center. It's not just in line on the front, it comes outwards. Ideally, you don't want to go touching that. 
your best place to shop, I use a diamond card. I've got the bevel underneath. It's about a 55 degree bevel. But we're in the diamond card, and I'm just trying to see which camera will go to there. Let's try overhead to start with. I've got that there, you can see the bevel angle. If I load the pencil, that's your bevel angle. 55. All I want to do with my diamond card now is bring it up, match that angle. Just push it up round, okay? Work round that curve, all the way round the edge, round the front. That's going to produce a micro bear. If I get a heavy bear, I can put it across the top and take out that little five degree drop, which is where that hollow is. I don't know if you can see there, play around with my angle. You can see the card move. That's the five degree drop. So, card, back in. So, all I want to do, two or three swipes across the top, take off the bear, up the front again, 55 degree bevel, work around that curve. The only time I put this back on a bench grinder is when this becomes quite straight. So I'm starting to get a bit right on the edge here, getting a silver patch here, silver patch at the top, a little bit of hollow in between. I can grind that out just to produce the hollow again. Once I've got that hollow back, back to our diamond file, start again. So you don't need to go to your grinder very often with that. You're not producing a heavy bear like we'd assume with a normal tool. This has got a micro bear. This actually is probably as sharp as my hand plane now. All right, real fine little bear on the top. Square edge one. Again, we have hollow grind. If I can move my hands around a bit, try and support it. So down on here, we have hollow grind coming off the side, one on the front. Small radius corner. So all of these little bits are quite important. The left hand side here where my finger is, isn't actually square. So this has got an angle and it's so difficult to try and show you on the thing. Let's go to camera two, I think. Let's just have a quick look. Now if I try and hold diamond card, that side's square. The other side, we get a little bit of taper. That shows it nicely. So look at where the pencil tapers out. So the pencil side, we have a tapered edge. So my best place to sharpen that is out on that tapered edge. Up and down, that's for storing the cut up on here, this top edge, which has got that grinding edge coming out. So again, you don't touch that with anything. Front, I can work round it the same as we did. Round those, round there, round the corner. So we actually take from there, we're pushing up that 55 degree bevel, round the corner. Create that little radius is quite important so it doesn't bite. Top edge you shouldn't need too much, but again, if you get a too heavy a bear, a couple of swipes, it's all you need. Most of what you want, coming up the front when this becomes flat again and we've got a nice hollow in here so i've done this on a bench grinder starts to become flat again then yes put a hollow back in then go back to your diamond card all right but the major thing i'm going to sharpen it with is that all right little dmt diamond card really useful all right i like the ones that are a solid steel plate because they're easier to hold easier to control no little holes to dig in either so come around that edge Quite easy to sharp. Stay away from your grinder with it. Okay, now we've got to do one other thing. We've got a couple of things still here. One of some of you will have had this the humble cabinet scraper. This thing, wow, if you can get it to cut, it's fantastic. Okay. If you can't get it to cut, why? And over the years, I'm shocked on how many people come in and go, how do you sharpen this? So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna move a few things around on the bench, move a camera around. We're gonna go through diamond cut for the cabinet scraper. So we'll move a few things about. I've got to move the vice so we can do the cabinet scraper. So we've set up, changed the bench around a little bit. The humble cabinet scraper. And I will say it's like one of these mysteries of life, isn't it? Okay, how do you get this to cut? And again, when you get it out of the pack, brand new, these are Veritas ones, it don't cut. You should get something. I'm get, getting like something a little bit, but I'm getting more dust than anything. Okay, so we need to, reality, sharpen it. Give it something as an edge. Want to curl that edge over. Now we have done this as a whole video where I focus a little bit on this. So what is this? This is a piece of spring steel or high carbon steel depending on the manufacturer. This is probably about two mil thick. All right. 
got a little bit of bend, I get thinner ones, thicker ones. We should be able to take a nice shaving all the way down the board. So we need to do some work to this to get it to work for us. All right? And that's a sad scenario, isn't it? You buy something like this and you've got to do a bit of effort. But unless you know how to sharpen it, it becomes more of a problem. First thing we want to do, we want to clean up what they've actually done as an edge on here. These will probably be guillotine cut. They take a bit of a bear off. It doesn't feel like it's got anything of the bear in any of the corners. So first thing I do, hold it in a vice. Glasses. Hand file. Uh, that's all we've got to say. I think this is second cut. I've taken the tang off the end and softened it because I want to hold it parallel to where we're going. Okay. So I'm going to push down through. You can see I've got the curd in there. Let's just see if I can drop you down just a little bit more. Look. Get you more in picture. So we've got that curd. I want to push it straight down through there. This is about creating a new surface, getting rid of anything machine-wise. So one, we're going to do the other side as well. Line the file up again, nice and straight. We're pushing through. Reason for no tang, it's under my wrist, so I know I'm not going to cause any damage now with this softened in. So we've done that bit. Now let's produce the bear. People go, does that cut? No. Not that we want. So we're going to bring a diamond stone. It's one of the, the best times I will use a diamond stone. Something is a block of wood. I want to keep this nice and square. So I've got a square corner on here, hence the arrow. I can put that on top. Work down that edge. So you can see where we're going now. Change direction a little bit. Other side. Then we need to take off any sign of any bear on this. So nice and flat. Fingertips keep your pressure. You could do the block of wood on top if you like, but your fingers will work nicely there. So what we're trying to get with this now, no bear. I've got a tiny bit there. Double check where things are. So we've actually now got a nice square corner. Back into our vise. Lock it up. Now we need something that's harder, metal-wise, than the steel used for that. So this is actually a carbide burnisher. This has got a round bar of carbide steel in here. So I can bring it up, get my location. All right, so you can see what I've got as a bar. I've got a handle bit, a little button I can hold. Set my angle, I can use the side edge as a little bit of a guide. I can push down. So I'll swipe down through. I can come back if you like. One, I'm gonna turn it round. Got four sides to do. How much pressure? The more pressure you put on, the more you'll curl that corner a little bit. One more to do. We might as well do all four. We've got it out. We start to sharpen it. I don't know if we can show you. Let's have a go. I'm going to sharp, put it on the wood, but on here. Just get that little bit of resistance. I've just curled a corner. So I've made a hook. Get that little bit of drag. Doesn't want to quite go off the edge without a force. Go to my bit of oak. Let's see if we get something different now. We're not getting dust now. We're actually getting shavings. Curly things. Got to control it a little bit. I can change my angle. That's quite heavy, that side. Let's bring it down. But you can see what we're actually producing now. We've gone from something where we were producing lots of dust to actually we're producing a shaving. So your cabinet scraper, tricky thing to sharpen. Now, don't have to go back through the whole procedure that we've just done every time. If I put it on something flat, go back to my burnisher, back along. I'm gonna cheat a little bit for a minute. That's the edge we've just done. 
No, I pushed the burr back over. And I've curled it again. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? So you can see how you can get your cabinet scraper nice and sharp. All right? Real easy one to do, but takes that little bit of... What do you do with them? How do you get a cabinet scraper sharp? If you've got a little plastic protectors, put them back on. Going to stop you damaging these if you put them back in the packet or anything, right? So, but real useful tool. Um, I've made lots of Windsor chairs with using cabinet scrapers, try and shape the seats. So, such an important part. Get that nice shaving. Okay. Last thing I'm going to look at. I'm going to change the bench around again in a second. Your bowl gouge. Surely when you buy a bowl gouge out of the packet, it's going to work, isn't it? We can do things to it, okay? So, let's get set up for that, and then we'll get it back in to have a closer look. So, last thing possibly to look at, the bowl gouge. I mean, you'd think, wouldn't you? You're going to turn a bowl, you'd just have a bowl gouge. Yeah, you're going to need different shapes, different angles, maybe, depending on the depth of the bowl, the shape of it, how open it is. But you can get into something more universal, Things have changed over the years. Traditional grind, you get long grinds, Irish grinds, so you can do lots of research in it. Tormek do a really good instruction sheet on that sort of thing. Let's give you an idea of what we've got. Brand new bowl gouge out of the packet. Let's just have a quick look and see if we can see where we are. I'll bring myself in a bit. So we can see our gouge. You can see it's actually very square across the front. Not quite a nice bevel angle. Now, I do know a few people that would use a square grind, which was more traditional. Um, I tend to use a fingernail shape. Colwyn uses more of a fingernail shape. We use something with about a 55 degree bevel angle. This to me would be a little bit scary. I'd be worried about catching these top corners on the workpiece when we're hollowing. I'd want to come back a little bit. So we're going to show you how we can grind that from where we are now to a finished chisel. So you know what you've got to do. So I'm going to come around the other side of the bench. I'm going to use the bench grinder. Get to here. So our bench grinder here, we have CBM wheel. That's just what we picked up this morning. It's what we've got in here. Okay, so you could have white wheel. Other thing I've done is given myself a table so I can produce a 55 degree bevel. So I can lay that on. I've got a look at what my angle is. Get a guide. The factory grind isn't far off that 55 as a, as a bevel angle coming down. That gives me a good guide. What I want to do is change the shape of the top wings a little bit. So I've clamped this on, a little clamp down the side onto the table to make it easier to support it. So you can do little things like that. Change my glasses to a set of safety glasses. Grinder, let's put this on. I'll get to speed. First thing I want to do with this, sound right? Okay. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, we're going to grind off the top. So I'll bring the guide down. So nice and lightly, I'm holding the gouge upside down. Just taking those corners back. So I don't know if we go there. You can see we've already changed that shape from something very square. We're taking those top edges off. A little bit more to go. So carefully drop it on, especially if you've got white wheel or stone wheel not too much weight behind that's a good start point now i can bring this on the table bit's going to give me more support so i can actually bring this round now my handle's got to move now as i move i rotate the chisel up and down around so working on the edges more not too much in the middle at this stage we're going to grind the center of the gouge out so swinging my handle out wide, but rolling the flute a little bit as I go. So a little bit more. Let's just have a quick look, I think. See where we're getting to. We're starting to get our shape. We've still got a little bit of flat on the top. We're getting our curve. We're back in. So you can see the joy of having that bigger table just helps support it. The flute at the moment, right over about 10 o'clock, working on the left hand wing, back across the middle, we roll it, upright, rotate it a little bit so we're coming over to about 2 o'clock. 
Christian, right hand wing nail. Track fair. So lots of movement on that handle. Quite a lot of travel. Let's have a quick look again, see what's going on. Looking better. A little bit more on the wings. So left hand side, just straightening that up. Okay, let's have a quick look on here. Now we've got CBM wheel, little cat cooler, not as hot. It is warm, if I try and grab it, yes, it's hot. So, on the top edge here is quite straight. Either side, we've got an angle coming down round. Let's roll that over. I think you can see our shape. Looks quite nice. Look how much we've changed it from when we started. Right, it's very square, so we ground those wings back. Quite quick and easy to do. Something like adding a table. So easy to do. So we've got our shape. Let's give you an idea of this table, then what do we do for this? We undo it. Take it off. This is UJK clamp. Has a bar through 90 degrees. A cut piece of wood for the angle I want to sit on the table. I tested it regularly. I clamped an extra bit of plywood on the top to give me a bit more width and a bit more support. Any time I want to use it now, I can put it back on, clamp it back up. So make your life a little bit easier if you can. If the grinder hasn't got that big table, add something. Okay, so now we've done that side. Just get the grinder to stop. All right, so we've got our fingernail grind here. We've done something freehand. How about if we went with something as a jig. All right, so Tormac make a really good jig for this. Um, I've been sharpening 30 odd years and people look up and say to me if I do a demo, what do you sharpen with? One of them, chisel, CBM wheel, but use a jig, yep. Why? It's quicker, easier, more repeatable. I get back to the bit I enjoy, making shavings on the lathe. Um, grinding's a chore, I get messy, I mean my hands go black and everything, so let's try and see what we can do on this. So, let's just have a quick look, I'm just going to move forward along. So if we're going to freehand sharpen, that's great, but it's very difficult to make it repeatable. You need something good to sit on, so bigger table, you need control, bring it round. If you keep it still in the centre, and you just literally roll this, Without any arm movement, you're going to get a point. Dangerous to use, not nice to use. So you've got to swing it out. Are there better ways of going? So as I've said, I use something as a sharpening jig. So Tormek setup fits on the bench grinder. So on here, we've got a jig that fits on. Our gouge will go up through, but we also need to undo it a little bit. We have a setting jig. So this gives me the correct protrusion of 65 mil in this case. This is going to give me a 55 degree bevel angle. We want hole A is on there. Let's check where we are on our wheel. We're not bad. So the two metal discs make contact a bit like you do a normal Tormek. So they're in contact with the wheel. That's good. Check things are locked on there. This sits on the bar. We've got the scalpel doing our movement. All right. So Switch it on, quick and easy. Look at there, bring my body back a little bit. So my left finger, very light pressure, more guiding. Working on those side wings, bring it over. I don't need any weight on the tool really at all. The tool weight should be enough to get us to do this bit. What we're doing now, this time we're restoring the edge. Done. Let's just grab that marker pen. Just going to do camera two. That one here. So if I colour this in. Hoping you can probably see all that black colour. 
and do this. We take it out. Don't want you to think I'm cheating. Bring it back in. Right. That bit. Up to 65. Lock it off. Turn lid back on. We put back in. We're exactly the same location now. Again. We can just move it about. Nice and easy to control. So let's have a quick look. I think we'll go to there. Not bad today. So good shape on our gouge. Let's have a look. I don't know if we can get close up on the video. Back in there. That look better. Fingernail profile, nice clean wings, ground the back, better shape to work with. So we've done our gouge, so we've had a bit of a look. Now, problematic one to sharpen, I know, and lots of people over the years have said, how do you sharpen things like a bowl gouge, spindle gouge? So we've knocked it back, we've shaped it, you can see how simple it is. Adding something like a jig, wow, makes all the difference. I know it was one of those years ago, going, oh no, I can freehand sharpen. I can still do it now, but... So much quicker to do it with something as a jig and make it repeatable. Likewise, something like your hand plane. If you can have something as a honing guide, you'll spend less time sharpening, you'll waste less money on buying a replacement blade, if you like, or getting frustrated with a tool that doesn't work. If tools aren't sharp and right and sharp right, they're not going to work properly. I do understand that fundamental thing of, shouldn't they come sharp? They don't know what you're going to do with them most of the time. And it's, it's all cost to get things really sharp. That can get damaged in transport. So you need to know how to sharpen it as well. That's fundamental to you using it to make sure it's going to work as you want to cut it. So from something as simple as hand plane, chisel, cabinet scraper, bowl gouge, you all need that little bit of work, okay? Hope you've enjoyed this, given you a bit of an insight. If you've got problem tools that you want me to look at, let us know, we'll see what we can do. Hope you enjoyed this Woodwork and Wisdom. We'll be back again soon. Thanks very much. Bye then.